Ford Mustang has been one of the most influential cars of all time, creating a class of V8-powered, entry-level American GT Coupes that would become known as pony cars. Although there is some debate over whether the car was named for the horse or the P-51 World War II fighter aircraft, it is safe to say the logo has always been the horse, even in markets where it was sold as the Ford T-5 for trademark reasons. The prototype was a two-seat sports car with a mid-engine V4, which naturally had side intake vents. The actual production car was much more conservative and was released in April of 1964 as a 1965 model. But it did include fake side vents, and it was built alongside the Falcon and Comet that it was based on. Using a smaller 108-inch wheelbase, it was 182 inches long and weighed about 2,500 pounds. To start, the engines included a 101 horsepower, 2.8 liter, 170 cubic inch 6, 164 horsepower, 4.3 liter, 260 cubic inch 2 barrel V8, and a 210 horsepower, 4.7 liter, 289 4 barrel V8. A 260 with a manual transmission was a low 17 second car and was tested at 21 miles per gallon. The 289 was more than a second quicker. Transmissions included 3-speed automatic or manual and a 4-speed manual. Updates in August of 1964 included the addition of a convertible and a fastback, as well as a shuffling of engines. The 170 cubic inch 6 was replaced by a 120 horsepower, 3.3 liter, 200 cubic inch 6. The 260 was replaced by a 200 horsepower 289 two barrel. The four barrel version was up to 225 horsepower and a 271 horsepower high po version was added. And the generator was replaced by an alternator. All of which caused the first four months of cars to be referred to as 64 and a half Mustangs. But they still counted as part of the 1965 production run of nearly 560,000 cars setting an all-time introductory model sales record, of which just over 15,000 were equipped with the GT package that included fog lights, side stripes, front disc brakes, and full instrumentation. Starting price was just under $2,400. 562 of the fastbacks were shipped to Shelby America, where they were modified into Shelby GT350s, 35 of which were GT350R SSCA race cars. Starting with the GT, they moved the battery to the trunk and added upgraded brakes that used bigger rear drums from a Ford Galaxy. The 289 Hypo was upgraded to a Cobra high riser that included a high riser manifold, tri Y headers, and Cobra valve covers, raising horsepower to 306. They came with a hood scoop and were only available in white with blue side stripes with the center Le Mans stripes being optional. 1966 Mustangs saw minor trim changes that included an actual grille replacing the steel mesh of the 1965 model, and backup lights became standard equipment, as well as the availability of the C4 Cruzomatic on V8 models. The Shelby GT350 saw more changes, such as functional side scoops and windows in place of the vents on the fastback. The battery was no longer relocated, but the back seat was now optional, and it could be had in blue, red, green, or black. It was also no longer badged as a Mustang. The first 252 were built on 1965 model Mustangs, and approximately 1,000 were offered as rental cars through Hertz as the GT350H. There was also a rare optional supercharger that bumped output to 440. Nearly 2,500 GT350s were made for 1966, including four convertibles, with overall Mustang sales exceeding 600,000. Styling was updated for 1967 with sharper, more aggressive lines, a concave rear end treatment, and a longer hood, adding two inches to the overall length and raising weight about 300 pounds. The added room to the engine bay allowed the addition of a 6.4 liter, 320 horsepower, 427 pound foot of torque, 390 allowing the car to do 60 in 5.5 seconds, the quarter mile in 15, and reaching speeds in excess of 130. The Shelby got more distinctive styling that included sequential tail lights from the Cougar, scoops on the side of the fastback, and additional lights mounted in the grille. The GT500 was also added to the line, 
with a 7 liter 428 cubic inch police interceptor rated at 355 horsepower and 420 pound feet of torque. Just over 2,000 were made, including one convertible and one 650 horsepower 427 Super Snake. 1968 again saw minor trim changes and the 289 would be faded out with only the standard 225 horsepower four barrel version being offered. It was replaced by a 4.9 liter 302 available in 210 horsepower 300 pound feet of torque two barrel or 230 horsepower 310 pound feet of torque four barrel. The Hypo 289 was replaced by a two barrel version of the 390 with a similar 270 horsepower but a greater 400 pound-feet of torque. And upping the ante mid-year would be the addition of a 428 Cobra Jet drag package, massively underrated at 335 horsepower and 440 pound-feet of torque, reducing the quarter mile to under 14 seconds. The Cobra Jet would also find its way into the Shelby as the GT500 King of the Road, which also saw other changes that included a more aggressive front end and hood, and a switch to 1965 Thunderbird taillights. And the GT350 would switch to the 302, either with 250 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque, or with an optional supercharger and 335 horsepower and 324 pound-feet of torque. There would also be a limited production of just over 4,000 California Specials, essentially a notchback Mustang dressed up to look similar to the Shelby's. For 1969, the Mustang got bigger. 4 inches longer, a half inch wider, nearly 400 pounds heavier, and more muscular. The side scoop went away on most models, and on those that retained it, it was smaller and higher. It also gained quad headlights, for that year only. Several new packages would also arrive, such as the Mach 1, mostly an appearance package that included stripes, hood scoop, spoilers, and pop-open fuel filler. But it also included dual exhaust, with your choice of V8 except the 302, as well as a wheel and tire upgrade. More than 72,000 were sold the first year. There was also the Boss 302, developed for Trans Am racing, using a highly modified version of the standard 302, producing 290 horsepower and 290 pound-feet of torque, managing a 15-second quarter mile and 130 mile an hour top speed, impressive for its small displacement. Just over 1,600 were sold. The Boss 429 was developed to qualify the new engine for NASCAR, which never came to fruition. It was meant to compete directly with Chrysler's 426 Hemi. Advertised at 375 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque, fewer than 1,400 would be made. It could do 60 in 5 seconds and the quarter mile in the high 13s. There was even a luxury package added, called the Grande, sometimes referred to as the Grand Coupe with a softer ride, more sound insulation, and fake wood trim, while the GT package was discontinued after fewer than 5,500 were sold in 69. But a bigger six became available, 155 horsepower, 4.1 liter, 250 cubic inch version of the Thrift Power Straight Six, as well as the 5.8 liter, 351 Windsor V8 in 250 and 290 horsepower tunes and a drag pack could be added to the 429 Cobra Jet that included a performance gear ratio and engine upgrades to improve durability, such as an oil cooler, making it a super Cobra Jet. The Shelby's got an even more extensive styling update, making them another three inches longer than other Mustangs, and it was almost unrecognizable as a Mustang. And the GT350 now used a 351 Windsor with 290 horsepower and 385 pound-feet of torque. This car would spell the end of the agreement between Ford and Shelby, although leftover 69 models would be updated and sold as 70 models. The actual 70 Mustangs got a mild facelift that smoothed out the look and the side vents were now completely gone. Other changes were minimal, such as the 351 Windsor, being replaced by a 351 Cleveland in 250 horsepower and 300 horsepower tunes. And there were additional limited production appearance packages, such as the Twister and the Sidewinder. The 429 Boss would see production stopped after 500 more were made, making a total of less than 1,400, while the Boss 302 would see just over 7,000 more for 1970. But overall sales for the year were down to 190,000 
were roughly 130,000 less than the year before. So 1971 would see the most significant restyle to date, getting even bigger still. Length was up to 190 inches, still on the 108 inch wheelbase, and weight was at 3,500 pounds. Engine choices were now the base 4.1 liter, 250 cubic inch, 145 horsepower, 232 pound feet of torque straight six, a two barrel 302 with 210 gross horsepower and 296 pound feet of torque, while the 5.8 liter 351 Cleveland came in two barrel 240 horsepower 350 pound feet of torque, four barrel 285 horsepower 370 pound feet of torque regular and Cobra jet versions, and a 330 horsepower 370 pound foot of torque Boss. Or you could get a 370 to 375 horsepower, 450 pound feet of torque, 7 liter 429 Cobra Jet or Super Cobra Jet. The Mach 1 package now included heavy duty suspension and the hood scoop was a no cost option, but they were non-functional unless you ordered the Ram Air option, which included a decal to indicate its presence. And body colored bumper and mirrors were also added and it could now be ordered with the 302. The package was still technically only available on the fastback, or sports roof version, although the cosmetic changes could be had on the notchback hardtop as the spring special. The 351 Boss was similar looking to the Mach 1, except with chrome bumpers, and the full hood was the color of the stripes. The 351 Boss could move the heavy car through the quarter mile in 14 seconds. It was a one year only package, with about 1800 being made, just slightly less than the 429 Cobra Jet, which was also gone in 1972, which saw the move to net horsepower ratings, meaning the 6 was now rated at 95 horsepower and 197 pound-feet of torque, and the 302 140 horsepower and 139 pound-feet of torque. The 351 Cleveland was offered in base, 177 horsepower, 284 pound-feet of torque, or 266 horsepower, 301 pound-feet of torque Cobra Jet, or 275 horsepower, 289 pound-feet of torque high output versions. Nearly 9,400 Mustangs were ordered in the blue and white Sprint edition to commemorate the 1972 Olympics. Styling was marginally updated for 1973 to accommodate bigger bumpers, and the 351 high output was dropped. But sales were down to 135,000, and there were complaints that the Mustang had become too bloated to be considered a performance car. So for 1974, an all-new Mustang arrived that was supposed to be more like the original, and was based on the subcompact Pinto. Dubbed the Mustang II, it was named Car of the Year. It was 175 inches long on a 96-inch wheelbase, and weighing 2,900 pounds, available in coupe or hatchback. The base engine was the big 2.3-liter inline-four from the Pinto, with 88 horsepower and 116 pound-feet of torque, with an optional 2.8 liter V6 with 105 horsepower and 140 pound-feet of torque. No V8 was offered the first year. The Grande was replaced by the Ghia, and the Mach 1 carried over, once again mostly as an appearance package. Prices now started around $3,200, and sales climbed back up to near $300,000. A V6 Mach 1 did the quarter mile in the low 18 second range, with a top speed just over 100. The car was modified in 1975 to accommodate the return of the two barrel 302, now marketed as a 5 liter V8. With 140 horsepower, it was half a second quicker than the V6 and the previous 302 Mustang. There was also a new MPG package that added a 318 gear ratio to the four cylinder for 23 miles per gallon in the city and 34 on the highway. 1976 saw the introduction of a number of appearance packages, the most popular being the Cobra II, intended to remind buyers of the earlier Shelby models. But there were other packages as well, such as the two-tone Stallion. But appearance packages would prove successful, with additional and updated packages continuing over the next few years. Updates that included new features such as a T-top, window louvers, and a reversed hood scoop, peaking with the King Cobra in 1978 that unlike other packages was only available with the V8, which was once again a 17 second car. The third generation Mustang arrived in 1979, based on the Fox format introduced a year earlier with the Fairmont. 
The wheelbase was up more than 4 inches and length 5 while losing nearly 300 pounds. The 88 horsepower 4, 109 horsepower 6, and 140 horsepower 8 cylinder engines all carried over with the addition of a 117 horsepower turbo version of the 4. The Cobra 2 package also carried over, now simply as the Cobra. Also for 1979, there was an Indianapolis Pace Car Edition. With prices now starting just over $4,000, sales would be just under $370,000. And Mercury got its own version as the new Capri. Mid-year, a 91 horsepower, 160 pound-feet of torque 3.3 liter V6 replaced the 2.8 liter. And for 1980, the 302, or 5 liter, was replaced by a 4.2 liter, 255 cubic inch V8, with 119 horsepower and 154 pound-feet of torque, only available with an automatic. With a low 19 second quarter mile, it was 2 seconds slower than the turbocharged 4 cylinder with a 4 speed, and the 5 liter Mustang II. Both four-cylinder models were available with a five-speed beginning in 1981. For 1982, the Cobra was replaced with the GT, and the Turbo was replaced by the return of the five-liter, now with 157 horsepower and 240 pound-feet of torque, and a four-speed manual. 1983 got a mild facelift and saw the return of the convertible. The 255 cubic inch V8 was dropped, and the V6 was now a 3.8 liter with 112 horsepower and 175 pound-feet of torque. A four-barrel was offered on the 302 for the first time since 1970, raising horsepower to 175 and torque to 245, and a five-speed manual became available with it. A four-barrel five-speed car was good for a 16-second quarter mile. The Turbo 4 returned to mid-year as an option on the GT with a higher price now with fuel injection and 145 horsepower. It was the Mustang's worst selling year to date at just 120,000. There was a 20th anniversary edition for 1984, badged as the GT350, white with a red GT350 stripe. And a fuel injected version of the 302 became available only with the automatic with 165 horsepower. There was also a new SVO or Special Vehicle Operations Mustang. In addition to its 175 horsepower, 210 pound foot of torque turbo 4, it got four wheel disc brakes and distinct styling. Other Mustangs got updated front styling for 1985. The Turbo GT was dropped, but the SVO was up to 200 horsepower, then to 205 in some later models. The 5 liter GT saw several updates to the engine, increasing output to 210 horsepower and other 5-liter Mustangs could be ordered with multi-port fuel injection and 200 horsepower, which would be the only version of the 5-liter for 1986, and the 4-cylinder would also move to fuel injection. And sales would climb back up over 200,000 for the first time since 1980, actually close to 225,000, making it the best-selling year of V8 Fox Body Mustang. Styling was updated again for 1987, both inside and out. Both the SVO and the V6 were gone, leaving just the inline 4 and the V8, which got additional updates, increasing power to 225 horsepower and 300 pound-feet of torque. 1989 models got updated emissions, and there was a 25th anniversary edition, only identifiable by a small plaque on the dash. 1990 models got an updated interior, and there was a limited run of special models for a 7-Up sponsored NCAA event that ended up being canceled, but not before nearly 5,500 of the emerald green convertibles were made. The four-cylinder got a horsepower bump to 105 in 1991. Starting price was now over $10,000, and the V8 got new five-spoke wheels, and sales dropped below 100,000 for the first time. 1993 saw a number of special editions, mostly special colors on convertibles, red, white, and yellow, but it also saw the introduction of the Special Vehicle Team, or SVT, Cobra, which included upgraded engine, suspension, brakes, and cooling. With 230 horsepower and 304 pound-feet of torque, it did 60 in 6 seconds, and the quarter mile in 14 and a half, with a top speed of 150 seeming all the more impressive as the GT saw a reduction in power 
to 205. And sales would climb back over 100,000 after dropping below 80,000 the previous year. It would also be the last year of the special service package introduced in 1979, also known as the police interceptor. 1994 would see all new styling inside and out. Still on an updated version of the Fox format, it was two inches longer. Four-wheel disc brakes were now standard, anti-lock brakes optional, and side vents returned. Transmissions were a five-speed manual or four-speed automatic. Standard engine was a 3.8 liter V6 with 145 horsepower and 215 pound-feet of torque. And the 302 is back up to 215 horsepower and 285 pound-feet of torque, except in the SVT Cobra, which was up to 240 horsepower. Once again, it would be car of the year. A Cobra did 60 in 6.5 seconds and the quarter mile in just under 15 seconds, topping out at 145 miles an hour. For 1995 only, a GTS package was offered that was a cheaper version of the GT with fewer features. And it would be the last year of the original 302. Ford's 4.6 liter overhead cam modular V8 would find its way into the Mustang the following year. New taillights made the updated versions easier to spot. Output was the same for the GT with the single overhead cam, while the dual overhead cam Cobra was up to 305 horsepower and 300 pound-feet of torque. The new Cobra was a second quicker with a top speed over 155, which could be had in Mystic Chrome, making the car appear to change colors. The GT versions gained 10 horsepower and 5 pound-feet of torque for 1998. Updated New Edge styling arrived for 1999, all of which were designated as 35th Anniversary Mustangs, although there was also a 35th Anniversary Limited Edition Appearance Package available in a variety of colors. Powertrains carried over, but the V6 was up to 190 horsepower and 220 pound-feet of torque, and the SVT Cobra to 320 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque. 2001 got interior updates, mostly to the controls, and minor power upgrades. The V6 to 193 horsepower and 225 pound-feet of torque, and the GT to 260 horsepower and 302 pound-feet of torque. There was also a bullet addition in reference to the 1967 Mustang Steve McQueen drove in the 1968 film Bullet. It had upgraded and lowered suspension, upgraded intake and exhaust, and brakes from the Cobra, as well as special trim and colors. Output was up 5 from the standard GT while the Cobra got independent rear suspension and a supercharger, as well as more distinct styling and wheels. 2003 got a Ford 100th Anniversary Edition with a premium interior that included leather, and it came in any color you wanted, as long as it was black. The SVT Cobra was up to 390 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque, and down to a 13-second quarter mile, and up to 175 mile an hour top speed. There was a 2003-2004 Mach 1 package that used the 305 horsepower V8 of the earlier Cobras. Trim was retro inside and out with a shaker style hood scoot and comfort weave seats. And 2004 got a 40th anniversary edition with special badging and trim. New fully retro styled Mustangs arrived for 2005 the new platform was based loosely on the platform that debuted as the Lincoln LS. Wheelbase was up 6 inches and length 4. The base V6 was up to 4 liters and produced 210 horsepower and 240 pound-feet of torque, while the GT was up to 300 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque and came with limited slip, stiffer suspension, and upgraded brakes. A 5-speed automatic was optional to the 5-speed manual. Sales climbed back over 160,000 from 130,000 the previous year. The Pony package introduced in 2006 added the performance options of the GT to the V6 model. The GT California Special package returned, adding more aggressive cosmetic changes inside and out, and Shelby introduced the GTH, bringing back the Hertz Renner Racer. 500 coupes were produced for 2006, and then 500 convertibles for 2007. That same year, Ford introduced the GT500 with a supercharged 5.4 liter V8 producing 500 horsepower and 480 pound-feet of torque, a six-speed manual and reinforced body structure. 
as well as a GT500 King of the Road with 540 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque, race tuned suspension, and a carbon fiber hood. In 2008, the GTH became the retail Shelby GT, and the similar Bullet Edition returned with 315 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque. But sales would fall below 100,000 again. There would be a 45th anniversary edition in 2009 and record low sales of just over 65,000. The 2010 model was updated with more aerodynamic styling and the turn signals being integrated into the headlights. It was half an inch longer and gained 50 pounds. A new 4 liter V6 with 305 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque arrived for 2011 equipped with a new 6 speed manual and 271 gearing. Mileage improved to 19 in the city and 31 on the highway, unless you opted for the V6 performance package, which used 331 gearing and included upgraded wheels and suspension. Power steering was changed to electric. The modular V8 in the GT increased in size to 5 liters and 302 cubic inches, no relation to the earlier 302, and identified by the designation Coyote. The all-aluminum overhead cam V8 produced 402 to 412 horsepower and 377 to 390 pound-feet of torque, depending on the octane of the fuel you used. Equipped with a six-speed manual, it could do 60 in four and a half seconds and the quarter mile in 12 and a half. A commemorative GT350 was also introduced by Shelby America. In base form, it produced 430 horsepower, but with the manual, you could opt for a supercharged version with 525 horsepower or 624 horsepower if you didn't mind giving up the factory warranty. And it also included upgraded brakes and racing suspension, tested to 60 in just over three and a half seconds. Sales only improved marginally. There was a 2012 Boss Edition that had limited amenities but got a number of performance and handling upgrades. Perhaps most notable was the quad exhaust and output was up to 444. An all-new Mustang was introduced in 2015 on its own platform. Wheelbase remained the same, but it was slightly lower and wider, and cabin space increased slightly. It had a new independent rear suspension. Base engine was a 300 horsepower, 280 pound-feet of torque, 3.7 liter Cyclone V6, with an optional 310 horsepower, 320 pound-feet of torque, 2.3 liter EcoBoost Turbo 4, or a 435 horsepower, 400 pound-feet of torque, 5 liter Coyote V8 with some variation in output for export models. The new Shelby GT350 got several performance and cosmetic upgrades, including a supercharged 5.2 liter, 315 cubic inch Voodoo V8 with 526 horsepower and 429 pound-feet of torque. Sales would once again rise above 120,000, just under 2,000 of which would be the 50th anniversary edition. And for 2016, there were 140 Shelby GTH rent racers to once again commemorate the Hertz Shelbys of the 60s. A 2018 mild refresh introduced at the beginning of 2017 would see the end of the V6, and the 5 liter saw several updates and displacement increased to 307 cubic inches with 460 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. There was a 2019 bullet to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the movie, only available in either the original green or in black. Most of the distinct details were related to interior trim, but it did receive a few performance upgrades, bumping horsepower to 480. It would also be the year that Ford introduced the Mustang Mach-E, a completely unrelated compact electric SUV more closely related to the Focus. But it does have some Mustang styling cues, and the name is supposed to indicate its sporty nature. The GT500 returned for 2020 with a supercharged 5.2 liter Predator V8 with 760 horsepower and 625 pound-feet of torque. The Mach 1 would also return a year later. More than just a cosmetic package, it had 480 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. 2022 emissions regulations reduced output of all models by 10 horsepower, with declining sales below 50,000 for the year.
but still outselling the Mach-E, which is one of the top selling electrics on the market. Although Ford insists demand for the Mach-E is exceeding production capabilities, with manufacturing in both Mexico and China. A new Mustang has been announced for 2024, suggesting it will be around for a while yet. Powertrains are expected to carry over, with increases in power, meaning a base 315 horsepower, 350 pound-feet of torque turbo EcoBoost 4, backed by a 10-speed automatic, and the most powerful version of the 5-liter Coyote V8 to date, meaning 480 horsepower and 515 pound-feet of torque in the GT, and 500 horsepower in the new Dark Horse version. Hopefully sales will improve, as it is one of the few cars still offered by Ford, or any American brand at this point. So for how long is really hard to say. Obviously, not every special edition Mustang has been listed here, as there have been many. But as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment below, and like and subscribe.